All right, and it looks like we are live. Hey, how's it doing, everybody? My name is Junior, and I want to welcome you all back to the Daily Digital. Today's date is Tuesday, August the 9th, and we have a wonderful show coming up here for you today. Uh, a couple of things that are on the agenda is a company who is actually allowing you to learn how to play the piano through virtual reality. Um, Coca-Cola, everybody knows Coca-Cola. They just came out with a new NFT package that is completely out of this world. Over in the UK, it looks like for whatever reason, people are not uh, getting too involved with digital shopping with their mobile devices. Uh, and it looks like the UK is saying that, hey, we want you guys to use your mobile devices a whole lot more. And then the last thing would be an actual job fair that's happening inside the metaverse. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that. We're going to take a quick break here, but then we'll jump right into it. All right, and we are back. So um, the first thing that I had to talk with you guys today, again, is about Coca-Cola. Um, Coca-Cola, again, a big major brand, sells soft drinks, soda, pop, whatever you want to call it, depending on where you come from. Um, but they are doing something for International Friendship Day. Uh, they're actually creating a lot of NFTs for it, minting it on the Polygon blockchain. And uh, before I actually go into this, I want to kind of show you guys what they did last year, because this is actually the second year that they did it. Last year for International Friendship Day, they kind of jump-started their, um, I guess they call it their uh, metaverse train or whatever. Uh, into stuff that they were going to start doing by doing a full collection of items for International Friendship Day. And this one was actually really, really interesting. Just in case that everyone uh, is not aware of what they did, it's going to kind of run through this real quick. Uh, so as you can see here, this image, they had four different items with the fifth bonus item. The four items were first a friendship box, which reimagined a vintage Coca-Cola cooler as a dynamic loot box with motion and element and illumination enhancements, including the living light vortex effect that visually connects all of the NFTs. Um, the next one is a Coca-Cola bubble jacket wearable, which is illuminated as well with effervescent fizz purposely featuring a futuristic look with subtle nods to Coke's nostalgic delivery uniforms. Uh, it will also, it will, it also will include an, unlockable version that can be worn and decided to central land 3d virtual reality platform and it's inspired by metaverse trends and the utility the jacket features the coca-cola color palette fusing the metallic red and aluminum can uh, and caramel brown with uh, of the dust of drink also they have a sound visualizer i guess it's just the sound um against like a little animation or whatever of uh, the coca-cola from the pop of a bottle opening to the sound of being drinking poured over ice to the unmistakable fizz and ah, that accompanies the first sip through a living uh iteration of iconic coca-cola red disc uh then also a friendship card refreshes 1948 artwork used in a set of coca-cola trading cards from the 1990s symbolizing friendship and refreshment so as you can see here it looks like this is the um friendship box there this over here is the um uh the artwork 1948 i think i said no 1990s card artwork there's a bubble jacket there bubble coat and there is the um the sound equalizer there and then lastly was to be a bonus item which is a actual real life retro coca-cola fridge um made in Italy and is custom made and stocked with ice cold Coca-Cola to be shared with friends. So I have no clue actually won this, but this is a pretty awesome for what they did last year. And then we jump over here to this year. Uh, the bubble themed NFTs were airdropped to digital wallets of existing Coca-Cola NFT owners on July 30th. So they just completely out the blue, out of the random airdropped these to Coca-Cola NFT owners. Uh, which is actually a really big thing. I think a lot of people are slipping on or sleeping on uh, these NFTs and they're really missing out. Like if you hold an NFT and you really hold it for a long time, it comes with a form of utility 
And this is one of the utilities here where Coca-Cola just hey, says, hey, we're going to airdrop you, you know, some cool stuff. Um, so, yeah, so they announced the launch of generative NFTs on Polygon to celebrate International Friends Day, Friendship Day. The NFTs were created by Taffy, an avatar creating company, and are one of a kind in truest sense of their shareable. Um, here's from Coca-Cola. This is your Twitter. I'm going to just play this animation here real quick. So this is like a brief little teaser that they had there. And the tweet actually said, for Friendship Day, we're celebrating you. Owners of our digital collectibles from last Friendship Day, Burger Day, and Pride will be gifted a new collectible NFT and uh, one to share with a friend. These will give you future access to Coca-Cola exclusives. So again, all about the utility. Once you own one of these NFTs from um, um, Coca-Cola, you get to gain a lot of access to more Coca-Cola exclusive items, uh, drops, merch, all that good stuff. Um, the bubbles inside of a Coca-Cola bottle inspired NFTs were airdropped to digital wallets of existing Coca-Cola NFT owners on July 30th. The collectibles come with a functionality like share to reveal where each nft will be revealed after being shared with a friend um let's see they've got polygon studio okay this is a tweet from polygon studios this is what they shared those are pretty cool um and then uh yeah so coca cola nft owners will enjoy utilities rewards and other perks like coke studio powered experiences gaming events and early access to coca cola creations limited edition product launches uh, a bunch more stuff here oh coca cola revealed that it has several metaverse events lined up throughout 2022 with activities planned for halloween in october well singles won't be left out out of the beverage firm either as it is doing something for international singles day in november as well so yeah, I definitely got to jump in on it before November there. Um, Coca-Cola had first revealed its plan to create it um, yep, last year back on T International Friendship Day in 2021 with the loot box auction. That's the kind. That's the one I just kind of showed you earlier. Um, yeah, the, the car added that the firm hopes to strengthen and expand its real magic community via connections through a variety of physical and virtual Coca-Cola experiences. So, yeah, so you guys let me know what you think about that. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are excited about it. I know a lot of people love Coca-Cola, uh, definitely over Pepsi and whatnot, uh, even though some people do like Pepsi over Coca-Cola. But Coca-Cola, to me, in my opinion, is like way bigger than Pepsi. So, sorry, Pepsi, about that one. Um, but, yeah, if you have not yet gotten into the NFTs and you're looking for a reason to it, uh, I would definitely say this would be your reason to jump into it. Coca-Cola, as of right now, is really rewarding people for owning their NFTs. Uh, and that is the real big power with the NFTs. All right. And so the next thing that we have here is the UK. UK is actually encouraging shoppers to see in-store through their phones. So this was like literally the only article story that I could actually find on this. I couldn't really find anything else. Um, I read through this article and it's not very clear as to what they're doing from this image here. It just looks like when, you know, people are in the stores, they're telling them, Hey, pull out your phones and, you know, see certain stuff you can save here. You can save there. You can buy one, get one free, you know, all the, all the stuff that kind of like already, posted on some of these products on the merchandise at the stores anyway uh, but it looks like they're actually pushing more people towards using the phone uh, why I have no clue to be honest but if you read through this article it says that um, uh, in benchmarking digital payments found that 83% of Brits owned a smartphone the second highest when compared to data from the other 10 countries studied that same report revealed that a third of online UK consumer transactions use a mobile wallet which is which also accounted for 18 percent of in-store payments all right the research found that british shoppers use smartphones 16 percent less 
than consumers in other countries to enhance their in-store shopping experiences. That's a key term there. Uh, they want to en enhance their in-store shopping experiences. Uh, this represents an oddly an odd anomaly in a country that is typically very open to mobile technology. So basically what the UK is saying is like, we are open to you guys using mobile devices for pretty much everything, but it looks like in other countries, they're using them a whole lot more. We are actually 16% less in usage for consumers using them. Um, so fast forward, we get to the part where they now are introducing uh, AR technology into stores. Uh, again, I'm not exactly sure, based on this article, I'm not exactly sure how they're doing it, but they are actually allowing people to use that or making it more beneficial for people to use their smartphones um, for those purposes. So while the growth of smartphones uh, enhanced shopping appears to have plateaued in the UK, that hasn't stopped the country's pioneering re retailers from forging ahead with the innovation in mobile shop tech which is augmented reality. Uh, Apple just recently opened up a flagship store in London last month and is celebrated with a launch of their AR experience that focuses on London poet and painter William Blake, who created for Getty Museum using Apple's technology. Um, let's see, so collaboration. Yeah, so I think I had to go to UK's website there to get more information. I didn't actually click on it earlier. I might click on it later and just kind of read a little bit more. Um, but I, this this whole thing here was kind of interesting to read, mainly because, you know, I, I always thought people, you know, use their mobile devices a whole lot already uh, and then using it also in stores but I didn't know who that countries like whole entire countries are trying to push them towards that as well. I thought it was more like a consumer things like, Hey, if I want to use it, I can, but you know, it's not a real big deal, but I mean, they did a whole study on it. And, and if you do research and a study on it and based on those findings, you, you think there's a problem, then, you know, there might be uh might be something to definitely look into. So be on the lookout. If you are in the UK, any of my listeners or watchers, if you are in the UK, uh, more stuff may be coming, especially in the AR realm for your shopping experience. <clears throat> All right. And then we move over here to a website called VR Scout. And VR Scout is a uh, website I go to often to get some of my news and stuff. You guys can check it out. Uh, but this one here is a job fair inside of the metaverse coming in later this month. Um, this article here came out August 6th, so like two or three days ago. And it looks like they are having a VR, um, I don't wanna say a VR, I would say just a virtual job fair in which you know people can join in from anywhere in the world um, and see you know what companies has in store, what companies are hiring, stuff like that. What I really wanna know is that are those companies going to allow people to continue to work quote unquote remotely are they going to allow people to continue to work uh, in the metaverse or virtually for that matter? That we have to wait and see. But as of right now, having a job fair inside the metaverse is actually a, a good idea in my opinion. When the pandemic happened, I know a lot of people who actually changed jobs and they had virtual interviews on Zoom and stuff like that. So this is, uh, this is nothing really too new other than the fact that they're doing it inside virtual reality with digital avatars and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I am going to, yeah, I already clicked on it. So, uh, the company is called active replica and after replica, Af active replicas, XR career and opportunity fair. This is happening, uh, August 25th from 10 PM Pacific time to 1 PM Pacific time. And then also August 26th, again, 10 PM Pacific time to 1130 PM Pacific time. Wow, that's late. I just realized it's saying p.m. So 10 o'clock at night to one o'clock in the morning. That's like two o'clock Eastern time. My, it's Pacific. Oh, no, that's sent. So we're like two hours away. So that's like three o'clock Pacific time. That's uh, that's crazy. 
But yeah, so if you want to discover jobs, internships, grants, scholarships, and emerging technology, uh, this may be the place for you. Uh, what is it? This is an interactive and immersive two-day event which will be hosted across dozens of virtual worlds. From their home in our Constellation Network, organizations will showcase the work they do and the opportunities to a buzzing audience and immersive technology professionals. Attendees will be able to join this web-based event with a single click, no app download or VR headset will be required to participate, which is something I forgot to mention. Uh, they did say that this will be done using uh, Mozilla Hubs. Mozilla Hubs, I don't think I've discussed them before, but basically on Mozilla Hubs, it's kind of like a web VR situation. Uh, I know for sure I've mentioned web VR to you guys. Um, so what you can do is actually join in. You don't have to have a VR headset. You don't have to have any specific technology for it. All you have to do is just go to the link, go to the website. You'll be able to have your own avatar. You can be right on your computer or right on your phone and then, um, you know, a desktop or a mobile. And then from there, you can just join in um, like that. You don't, you don't have to have anything specific for it or anything like that. Um, why attend, of course, to, uh, <laughs> to get a job. Organizations will have access to a diverse cohort of trained industry professionals as well as students and alumni from a wide range of immersive technology programs. Uh, opportunity seekers will have the chance to speak directly with hiring managers at leading British Columbian technology organizations. You'll get the lead on jobs, internships, a wide range of grants and scholarships, and that all coveted foot in the door to this exploding industry. Um, so yeah, so you guys, if you are in the, looking for a job, uh, or just want to, you know, see what's out there, check out the market, you know, in case you may not be looking for a job, but maybe looking for a, um, new avenue to kind of get into, but just don't know really what you want to dive into yet. Uh, definitely check out that metaverse job fair. It's going to be pretty interesting. I, myself, I think the tickets are free if I'm not mistaken. Uh, click here to get your tickets. Uh, yeah, it's right on Eventbrite. If you don't know what Eventbrite is, it's just a basically a um, uh, a ticketing software service. Um, pretty much everybody uses Eventbrite to host uh, tickets and stuff like that for different events or whatever. And uh, yeah, look says right here that they are completely free. All you have to do is check the date. I uh, don't think there's a cap. On it or anything like that. I mean, it's the metaverse. It's as many people as as they want can actually attend um, and stuff like that. Uh, Thursday, August twenty fifth, tickets include a facilitated group tour, and Friday, August twenty sixth, tickets are just general admission. Um, so yeah, so I'll probably get like the twenty fifth just to get the group tour. That'll be nice. Yeah, it's just saying using Google Chrome. If you're on VR headset, you can access through the Oculus browser or Firefox Reality. Uh, they give you this uh, description of how to use it, just using your keyboard, WASD keys, um, stuff like that. I mean, this is it's pretty straightforward as far as uh, as far as VR goes and, and the metaverse and everything. And then last thing that I have for you guys here today is a company called Magic. Keys. So this is magickeys.app and um, they are actually allowing people to learn how to play the piano through virtual reality on a physical piano. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a video here and this video that's going to play is actually going to show you two things. So the first thing is they're going to show you a guy with the VR headset on in front of an actual piano. And you'll see like stuff coming into the piano off the screen. Just be advised that that is actually what he's seeing inside of his headset. This is not actually on his piano. Um, so you'll, you'll kind of get the gist of it there. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. So yeah, so those blue and yellow dots are what he sees in the VR headset. And the VR headset is probably using pass-through technology, meaning that he can actually see those in front of him as well as the piano, as well as well as his hands and everything. Uh, 
And this is something I would actually use. I've tried to learn the piano before, uh, and I am not good at all. My, uh, my my fingers, for whatever reason, do not like to coordinate with one another. And there's ten fingers, so it's like you gotta imagine how how that is. But these he's actually really good. So yeah, I think you guys get the gist of it there. Um, this is created by, looks like Dominic Hackle. Uh, he is the creator of Magic Keys. He's a game developer and a passionate pianist. When I first got into AR, I was immediately hooked and couldn't think of a better use case than the piano learning. Combining my two passions, this felt the perfect match and I went on to spend the next few years developing prototypes for different hardware and researching digital music education. So congratulations to you, Mr. Dominic. This is uh, this is actually really, really good in my opinion. Um, I think this is all, yeah, this is all one page. So. Um, so yeah, so you guys definitely check that out as well. If you've been thinking about learning how to play the piano or if you've been thinking about, you know, how to play other instruments, I'm pretty sure he's not the first person to come out with it. If he is, be on the lookout for many, many more to come out. I try to also play the... Uh, guitar when I was younger also yeah fingers was just not working right uh, I never actually tried to play the drums and that's probably what I'd probably be best at because uh, that's you know less fingers more just hand moving and stuff like that uh, I'm really good at Beat Saber if you ever played that on the Oculus headset as well um, so yeah so I think that is all it that I have for you guys here today please do check in with me on all my social media channels uh, all the handles to everything is inside the description for this video. Um, also inside the description for this video is the links to all of the different stories that I talked about, all the articles that I read through um, and discussed. So if you guys are more interested on it, please do some more research on it. Google search it. Drop a like in the, uh, in the comments. Let me know what you think about everything. And uh, until next time, you guys have a great one.